Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Bubblegum Reviews. My name is Steve and tonight's review will be on the movie here to the left of me. We have Treasure Island with Robert Newman. This is a first time watch for me and I came into this movie with no expectations whatsoever. Had no idea what was I was getting myself into aside from the fact that I know the story, which just happens to be my little summary here about the movie. So this is about Long John Silver and his band of pirates who try to get the treasure from Captain Flint's map, as well as uh, James Hawkins and some others. So anyways, um, first off, things that I really enjoyed about this were the cinematography in this was actually really good, especially for a 1950s film. The other thing was the music was actually not half bad. It was it was uh, pretty adventurous. The cast in this did a fantastic job, and I'm not I'm not familiar with any of them. Like I don't know any of the cast that was in this, but they did a great job in this. The costumes were really cool. The shooting location in this was primo, and just overall, this movie was actually really fun and adventurous. With that being said, this movie still does not, in my opinion, live up to Treasure Planet. That one I liked a lot more. Things I didn't care for about this, one, was the fact that there was zero female characters in this. There was extras that were females, but no characters were actually females. Why? I don't know. Um, the other thing I didn't really care for was... This movie was pretty violent for this, like, 1950. Uh, so the kid shooting somebody, somebody stabbing the kid, like, what? This is crazy. This is Disney, too. But anyways, uh, and at times I felt like the movie itself was bouncing around too much, and I didn't care for that. But... With that, uh, so one thing I noticed that I thought was pretty cool. So actually, there was a few things. This movie was very Disneyland style. First of all, I say that because it felt like a Disneyland play. I saw it I, when I went to Disneyland when I was a kid. I went to with my family and we saw the Aladdin play. As a kid, I was like, I don't want to do this. I want to do rides. And I watched it and I actually liked it. It was kind of like Waterworld. Like, I don't know if everybody's been to a play. Well, anyways, I'm not trying to go crazy here. But the play itself, I saw a lot of similarities as watching this movie. It was really cool. I liked it. The other thing was, so the music that's in this, I swear, like, if you're walking around in Disneyland, you can kind of hear that same music playing at certain areas. The other thing was, is so when they're getting ready to sail out on the big boat and head towards um, Treasure Island, they're in the town. They're all getting ready to, like I said, hop on the boat. And there's a scene right there where not only do the buildings look like they're straight out of Disneyland in California, but the so the there's a scene where the lady pushes the windows open from the second story, and I'm pretty sure she sticks something out and shakes it out like a rug or whatever. That, if you do not recall, that is like the same. That's literally the song in Beauty and the Beast where uh, Belle is in the town and it's totally that style right there. So that was really cool. There's movies out there like that totally make me feel like Disneyland, like pretty much any Disney cartoon movie does. But there's not a lot that are live action movies that do. Um, like... This is kind of the only one that I can think of, really, so far, that's actually made me be like, wow, this is totally like Disneyland. This is really freaking cool. So that whole aspect of it, I really was on board with and I really enjoyed. But so um, the other thing that I kind of wanted to point out that I thought was really cool was, so Robert Newman plays Long John Silver. Who does he look like? He looks like Bob Hoskins, just in general. 
Like, the, literally the whole time I'm watching him, I'm like, dude, this, this, literally Bob Hoskins could have played this. And I was like, you know what? Bob Hoskins, it was in Hook, and he played Smee. And then you, if you look at that, it's like the, the resemblance is uncanny, kind of. Like, what? So that was kind of cool. But uh, anyways, this is a fun, adventurous movie. If you know the story, you know what you're getting into. Director, we have Byron Haskin, which I'm not familiar with anything this guy's done. The only other thing I know remotely is The War of the Worlds, the 1953 version, which I haven't seen. I've only seen the Keanu Reeves one. IMDb gave this a 6.9 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gave it 100%. Dog Bones gave it a 3.5 out of 4. I gave it a 6 out of 10. Reasons I tell you to watch it are literally what I said. The acting all around is good. The cinematography, the music, this just makes you feel like you're kind of in like the whole Disney. It, it gets you in the Disneyland spirit. So if you... If you want to watch it, it's it's a good movie to watch right before you head to Disneyland. That's what I think. Okay? Okay. But um, box office of $4.1 million on a budget of 2 point... Sorry, 1.8. And the box office, before I forget, is actually from rentals. It's not from theater. It's from rentals. So I guess technically it shouldn't say box office, but it does, and that's where we're going to roll with it. So on a profit made of 2.3, which in 1950 does not seem like that's really a bad a bad amount. I mean, give me $2.3 million today. <laughs> Seriously. Um, interesting fact is, in this one is actually, this is Disney's first live-action movie. So, given that, they actually did a damn good job, I will say. So, I can't really nitpick too much, because, I mean, like, first live action, that's pretty cool. Uh, with that being said, up next, I will be watching a little movie here called Rock and Rolla. So, stay tuned for that, and like and subscribe, check out my letterbox, also check out my eBay, and last but not least, either like this review... Or start eating that trash can.